In this sermon, we're going to be discussing what happened at the first Christmas and does it even matter? And we're going to start by reading Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Hear God's word. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son for the virgin birth, his death, and resurrection, so that we could have salvation, deliverance from sins. Thank you for your grace, and we pray that we would respond with faith and obedience to you today. In Jesus' good name, amen. The most expensive and sought-out Christmas toy in 1983 was one of these guys, a Cabbage Patch doll. And there's no way... In 1983, I ever wanted one of these dolls, but I do remember vaguely the craze over it. I watched a video on YouTube at a store in Toronto where people were actually physically shoving and pushing each other around just to get a Cabbage Patch doll around the Cabbage Patch doll display because it was the hottest Christmas toy of the year and their child had to have it. Folks, this isn't a movie like Jingle All the Way. This was real life. There was great excitement and fervor to get one of these dolls. And I'm guessing that most of the dolls that were purchased in 1983 ended up in a dump somewhere or some used store. In fact, in the town that I live, in the used store, there's six that you could buy right now, Cabbage Patch dolls, for much less than what they were in 1983, which was about $30. A gift that was exciting in 1983 is now considered junk years later. This, like all toys that are hot around Christmas, the one minute everyone wants one, the next minute they're hoping someone will buy their junk at their garage sale or someone can get rid of their junk for as cheap as possible. But the gift that God has given us is always needed, always relevant, never junk. That is the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. In a thousand years, in a million years, in a billion years, in a trillion years, Jesus will always be the gift that everyone needs. We're going to be looking at the story of Christmas not through the lens of the Canadian culture or even what some people might teach in church. We're going to look at the lens of the Christmas story as it's been written by Matthew and Luke who were the original sources of the first Christmas. How do we know about the first days of Jesus, Matthew, and Luke? And what you will see when you read Matthew 1 and 2 and Luke 1 to 3, you'll see the great power of God. You'll see the great faithfulness of God. You'll see the great salvation of God. And you will see the complete obedience to God. So I have four points to consider as we look at what happened the first Christmas. First, the power of God, the virgin birth. Two, the faithfulness of God, 
Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Three, the salvation of God. The baby is named Jesus. And finally, the obedience to God, the life of Mary and Joseph. First, let's look at the power of God in the virgin birth. Both Matthew and Luke tell of the virgin birth of Jesus. The virgin birth of Jesus is one of the most contested truths about Jesus by those who reject him. The doubters also reject his resurrection. But we have two faithful witnesses that declare to us the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. And they are Matthew and Luke. In the Gospel of Matthew, Joseph is wondering what to do with his future wife because she's with child. The only two options in Judaism, which Joseph was, he was a Jew, for dealing with a wife who has gotten pregnant outside of marriage is divorce and public execution. But the Lord sends an angel to Joseph to tell him what is in Mary has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. Matthew 1.20 But as he considered these things, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The virgin birth is also a prophecy that Jesus has fulfilled. As the Jews were anticipating the Messiah, they anticipated a Messiah that would be born of a virgin, And we see this in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. What's that sign? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And that means God with us. In the Gospel of Luke, the angel... Gabriel announces this to Mary in Luke 131. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Mary shocked that what's going to happen since she is a virgin. And the angel gives her another word of affirmation of this situation in Luke chapter 1 verse 35. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child that will be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. The virgin birth and the conception of Jesus by the Holy Spirit is absolutely essential for Christianity. Because Jesus had to be that perfect and sinless person so he could be that perfect sacrifice for sin. As well, also Jesus had to be conceived by the Holy Spirit, so that he could be both fully God and fully man. The power of God. The virgin birth. Number two, the faithfulness of God. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. In both Matthew and Luke, Jesus is born in the city of Bethlehem. In the Gospel of Luke, Luke records the reason why Mary and Joseph end up in Bethlehem for the first for, for the birth of Jesus. Joseph goes to Bethlehem because Caesar has made a decree that all must be registered in their hometown. Here Luke chapter 2 verse 4 to 6. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. But there's another reason why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Matthew describes the birth of Jesus in the city of Bethlehem as a fulfillment of a prophecy made by the prophet Micah in Micah 5 verse 2. And that prophecy declares that there will be one who is from ancient who will be a ruler over Israel, who will be born in Bethlehem. This is the Messiah. Hear Micah 5 too. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old and from ancient days. 
Jesus being born in Bethlehem reveals to us that he is indeed from the family line of David, and thus he'll be a great ruler in Israel. But hear that, whose coming forth is from old. Jesus existed with the Father in the beginning, and now he is born in a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit. He is the Messiah. So we have the power of God, the faithfulness of God, and now we have, number three, the salvation of God. The baby is named Jesus. Both Matthew and Luke declare that the baby that is to be born to Mary is to be named Jesus. Now the angel commands Joseph to name the baby Jesus. In Matthew 1.21, you shall call his name Jesus. Mary is given the same command by the angel Gabriel. The baby must be named Jesus in Luke 1.31. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. The baby must be named Jesus. And we must ask the question, why is it so important that Luke and Matthew both mention that the Son of God be named Jesus? Well, the name Jesus is the Greek version of the Hebrew word or name Joshua. Joshua in the Hebrew literally reads, the Lord saves. Jesus, when he took on human flesh, he had a mission from God his Father, and that mission was to save people from their sins. So when you look at the people who encounter Jesus as well, and they speak about Jesus, they also call him a Savior. So not only is he named the Lord saves, when people encounter him, they acknowledge him as a Savior. Luke 2.11 The angels in Luke declare to the shepherds, that Jesus is a Savior, and they are to go and see him. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. When Zechariah, who is a relative of Jesus, hears about Jesus and his coming, and what he's going to do, he declares this about Jesus, that he'll be a Savior, a person who redeems the people of God. Luke 1, 68 to 69. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. A faithful Jew named Simeon praises God because he's seen the salvation of God. He sees Jesus Christ and he says after he sees Jesus, for my eyes have seen your salvation. The salvation of God. And finally, in the first Christmas story, we see complete obedience to God in the life of Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph were what we would call a power couple, not because they're powerful in the world, eyes of the world, but because they experienced the grace of God and they lived out the grace of God. We see radical obedience in Mary and Joseph, in Matthew and in Luke. First, we see that Mary and Joseph are sexually pure. They're not intimate until the birth of Jesus. It says in Matthew 1.25, He knew Mary not. He did not have sexual relations with Mary. He was completely obedient to the Lord. Second, we see their obedience as they both are obedient to the commands that they are to name the baby Jesus the commands that they're instructed from, from the angels. Luke 2, 21, at the end of eight days, when he, that's Jesus, was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And finally, I want to focus on Mary and her devotion. After she encounters the angel, hear what she says about her life. Behold, I am a servant of the Lord, Luke 1.38. I am a servant, or I am a slave of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed her. Mary and Joseph were both committed 
to serve the Lord and to be obedient to the Lord. So what on earth does this first Christmas even mean and why does it matter? Why do we need Christmas? Now when I'm talking about Christmas here, I'm not talking about Christmas dinner, Christmas presents, being together with family at Christmas. I'm talking about the first Christmas. Why do we need God's gift to us in Jesus Christ? Jesus is described as a Savior many times in Matthew and Luke. That means somebody needs saving. Why do people need saving? What do they need to be saved from? And until you understand the answer to this question, you will never see the need for God's Christmas gift to us, who is Jesus Christ. It's because we all have a problem. All humans have a terrible blight in their lives, and that's because we all sin. All people have sinned because we've done things that God has said we must do. And all people have sinned because we've not done the things that God said we must do. I spent about an hour reading and thinking about all the verses that teach the sinfulness of humans. And there are a lot of them. And when you read the Bible, it's a lot of sin going on in the Bible. But I have a few for you to listen to. Psalm 130, verse 3. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Who can stand before God, perfect and holy, if the Lord marks iniquities? The answer, no one. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20, written by Solomon, who did a lot of sinning himself. He says, surely there's not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. And of course, this could be summarized in Romans 3.23, the famous verse, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then I went through all the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. And I was reminded again that I had broken each and every one of those commandments. And that is why we need God's gift. Because we need saving from our sin. Praise the Lord. That is why Jesus has come. Matthew 121, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. If Jesus is not your personal savior today, you need to see that your sin has put you at odds with God. It's separated you from God. It's, in essence, you deserve God's judgment and punishment, just judgment and punishment for your sin. And that is why we need this gift. You need to cry out to Jesus and ask him to save you. Ask him to forgive you. You need to trust in what Christ Jesus has done for you on the cross. Jesus came and died for people who need saving. And that is each one of us. And finally, how ought we to respond to Christ? Since God has been so gracious to us, how are we to respond to God's graciousness as believers? We respond just like Mary and Joseph did. They were obedient to God. Mary declared that she was a servant of the Lord. If you're a follower of Jesus, do you see yourself as a servant of the Lord? Or are you serving the Lord and you're serving other many lords in your life? You're serving not just two masters, but many masters. Jesus calls us to follow him, to serve him, and to serve him alone. Jesus has come to save, and if you're a Christian, Christ has saved you from the severe consequences of sin, alienation from God for eternity. But let us respond with faith and obedience to God, all to his glory. The Gospel of Luke has this declaration, glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace among those with whom he's pleased. We can have peace on earth only because of Jesus Christ and his saving grace. If you do not know him, trust him, come to him now. Thanks for watching and God bless.